of the public testnet. So this is similar to our recent discussion on Robson. So if we create a public testnet like this, and even if we set the uh, difficulty to something very low, then anyone can actually start mining on this and raise the difficulty oh. very quickly and cause trouble. So will we limit the um, block miners by IP or by adding some signature and extra data? One of the two we have to do. Or just restart it every <laughs> so yes, often. Yes, my, my suggestion is to ag aggressively restart the chain. Okay, that's and, and move it every time you restart. So, you restart it, yeah, so and I guess I, following you. I would, yeah, like, once we have a solution for Robston, I think, and we've tested it on Robston, I would be fine moving it there. But just in the meantime, to like get this out ASAP, I, yeah, I'd also be in favor of restarting the chain more frequently. Um, then trying to solve this problem as like a blocker to getting this test set out. Yeah, I agree. Restarting the chain here is uh, like we cannot restart the Robston, but we can restart this test net. So there should be no yeah. attack, or maybe if it starts being yeah. the problem, then we can do something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Probably good to, to just have a simple process that allows the people who involved to easily coordinate for where the new chain is, because you have to be able to find it and you don't want the attacker to be able to automatically move. So you just want some just human process that you just all, you know, agree. Okay, we'll post it in this private channel, you know, or whatever, the chain ID. So we can- We can use the 1559 the Discord. And if that becomes yeah, a sure. problem, we can use a chat between, just, just, you know, yep. Yeah, just something that's not easily automated for the attacker to automatically follow. Like they have to be a yeah. human paying attention, sitting around. Good point, yeah. So let's, let's start with the fee market channel and if, uh, if that gets uh, compromised, we can find something more robust. Sure. Um, okay, and yeah, then, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question about JSON RPC. Um, so do we need to expose to additional fields on transaction structure or on ETH get transaction by hash endpoint? Yes, this is a plan. Yeah, I will write those four AIPs. I already wrote EIPs uh, for the block data, and I will write EIPs for the transaction data. Yeah. Yeah, we exposed that, but um, we checked it with uh, on Beso, and on Beso it's returned the old. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We still not have implemented. Oh, uh, okay. The get transaction by hash, and mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so on the test nets, we have the POA. We said we'll finish that. We've we've tested, I think we did do this, right, Abdel? Like we did run like the base U1 and we've- Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this one's done. And then these two we're basically combining into the fork of mainnet. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, yeah, other testing. Uh, so, uh, another mind you mentioned you're using 1559 as part of a, of a, a, a client network. Uh, Falcoin also has 1559. Near Protocol also has it. I should link uh, the uh, there a bit, had a, had a write up about it. Um, and then from Celo, uh, yeah, they're also working on 1559. And uh, they mentioned they can kind of help for testing with our work if there's overlap, but their implementation is, is slightly different from Ethereum's. Um, so I'm talking with them to see if there's, you know, anything where there's there's a lot of value uh, for them to contribute. Um, if people have ideas about testing that is kind of falling through the cracks and where not having exactly the same implementation can be valuable, uh, please ping me. Um, and then, yeah, just on the R&D side, uh, I guess, uh, in terms of theoretical analysis for the EAPS, uh, since the last call, the biggest change is Vitalik put together some slides uh, about 1559 uh, that were quite good. Uh, so if people want to have a look at that, um, they give a good overview. Um, and then, uh, yeah, in terms of comparing 1559 with the alternatives, I linked your notebook here, uh, Barnabé. Um, and then Barnabé, uh, in terms of simulations uh, on the last call, you mentioned a couple more things. So I've, I've just linked them there uh, for uh, people to be aware. 
And then the final bit is um, the community outreach. So we shared already, uh, we've done a report with uh, the cat herders about uh, people's thoughts on 1559. We're continuing to do more outreach, mostly around wallets and exchanges. Uh, it's going a bit slower now. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly when we'll have an update on this, but it's, it's kind of happening uh, in, in the background. And that's basically all I had on the agenda. Is there anything else that people feel we should uh, bring up? Okay, um, so I'll share, uh, well, I guess we'll have a full transcript for this. I'll share an update on Twitter today. Um, and I guess the big things are just continuing to work on the tooling, getting the work started on the test net and trying to specify this transaction pool behavior. Uh, we have another call scheduled in four weeks. Does that seem reasonable in terms of timeline for people? Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. Thanks everybody for joining. Appreciate you all taking the time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.